to do this morning, so I better get going. <sighs> so you see my weight is um, 166, and it should be by now like 164, 163. So I'm like three weeks behind because that's how much I weighed three weeks ago. So in my mind, that's why I feel so much pressure is because I know I have to really, really catch up to that and like put in the work. And that's why I'm doing cardio two times a day. But yeah. Jokey, you wanna go for a walk? You wanna go outside? Let's go, come on. Come on, baby. Time to go for a walk. My good boy. He's my good boy. Huh? Let's go. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Glasses on. Check. Keys. Check. You ready, Wolves? Let's get you. Hang on, this is hard with one hand. There we go. Okay. Come on, let's go, buddy. Oh, it's a good boy. Oh, it's a good boy. Yeah, it's a good boy. Oh, I'm gonna get like all caught up. Oh my god, stop moving. This way. Okay. Let's go, buddy. Let's go, good boy. Okay. Hey, my arm's getting tired of this camera. It's fucking heavy. Can you sit, buddy? Can you sit? Sit. Go, go, go. Okay, that's it. Let's go. No, that's where I'm at. Let's do it. Good boy. Let's make a boy. He's so precious. He's so precious. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> A more beautiful poo has never been caught on camera. I shall clean it up now. Thank you. Oh, buddy. Come on. Come on, babe. Let's get a treat. Let's get a treat, buddy. Let's get a treat, buddy. Let's go. It's a good boy. Greenies. Yas. Yas. Greenies. Yas. Greenies. Huh, buddy? <laughs> He's waiting till I say it's okay. Yuki. Okay. Good boy. Okay, now I have to hurry and get ready and run over to AHF where I'll be meeting my agent and then having my um, bi-weekly marketing meeting. Okay, so I'm headed to AIDS Healthcare Foundation, which is right on Sunset Boulevard in Hollywood. Meet my agent in the lobby and then we'll head up.
Hopefully I have time to get some coffee because I'm tired. Usually I do my gym in the morning. This morning I obviously didn't have time with, um, just I was doing a lot of, on social media and trying to post up about the, the Love Line Radio Show interview that I'm doing tonight and catching up on stuff and Duke and whatnot and just time slipped away. So yeah, coffee please, please. Love it. Guys, I'm looking at the road. Don't worry. <laughs> oh, I'm such an idiot. Puppy! I need a GoPro to mount on my dash. Or something other than me carrying this heavy ass thing in front of my face. Soup's ox. Super awkward. Yes, Hollywood! Yes, Amoeba! Yes, Arclight! We doing it! That big tall building right there, that's where AHF's at. Right, let's play this one and then the other one if you can. Okay, thank you. Thank you. You got it. Okay, parked at the Palladium and then I'm gonna walk across the street. So I am here about 15 minutes early, so I'm gonna go grab a quick iced coffee, wait till my agent gets here, and then we'll go up. We. Hey, how's it going? Good. Can I just get a medium black iced coffee? Yeah, what's this? Medium? Oh, you said medium. Yeah, it's all good. There she is! <laughs> how are you? Good, how are you? Look at that. She's oh, getting her little vlog. Good to see you! Right. How are you? Good! Oh! <laughs> I'm challenging myself to do okay. a vlog every day until my competition. Three weeks. Are you really? Yeah. Look at you! Doing it right now. I'm working on it. You look amazing. Thank you. You look great. You're like beanie. I'm getting there. <laughs> <laughs> so I just parked on this. You did? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Is it like meter or something? Yeah, it was, it was two hours. I just okay. drove right by it, so I thought this is perfect. Okay. I'm glad you guys finally are going to meet. I know, me too. <laughs> Hi. Hi. What's up? Hi, guys. How's it going? How are you? Hi. Good to see you. Okay. Kevin. Hi. Kevin. Oh, my goodness. Nice to meet finally. you. I'm so happy to put yeah. like faces with names. Um, so we're going to be in this big conference room. I'll get you guys settled in them. Hi. Oh, right yeah. this second. How are you? Yeah. Hey, how are you? Hi, Good. Michaela. Hey, oh, Adette. Nice, nice to meet, to meet you. you. Pleasure. <laughs> I've seen you. It's even better from the conference room. Yeah. 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 Wow. We liked I out. <laughs> yeah. So, so my agency is oh, just a couple blocks down. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, Aaron yeah. has that one. Thank okay. you. Okay. Now, this is a Where should we? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. It's very big. Okay. Hi. Hi. <laughs> the first step on our agenda is we're doing an out of the closet Halloween costume contest. So we're gonna have Rafe shoot a video that's basically like we're gonna go into the out of the closet the thrift stores. It's right down street. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, we're gonna pick out stuff for Halloween costumes and um try and make a little promo video for the contest out of it. The contest starts on October first. Mm -hmm. Michaela has been booking three, four, four. well yeah. five, including San yeah, Francisco. Five drag queen influencers to host the actual event. So oh. I think the LA event, it's looking like it's gonna be on October 27th. So yeah, that's right. Sunday, like during the afternoon. So the queens, we're getting four for LA, 
they were all on Drag Race, yeah. and they're going to host a drag runway or like a Halloween costume runway competition. They're they're going to be in drag, obviously. Cool. Um, and it'll be like just like a three hour event. Whoever wins the contest wins like. Um, closet cash, like OTC gift cards. We can do it at the WeHo store, it's usually at the... Oh, releases. yeah, we can go to WeHo. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. And it's Thursday, right? Yeah. Thursday? Yeah, sorry, did I say tomorrow? Yeah. Whoops. Like, What's Thursday? <laughs> My days are all mixed up. Um, that's more fun. Rafe is going to come and we're going to do the show. Oh, okay. One did I invite you to that? Yeah, well, you're... I'm all wet. I'm in Atlanta. Oh, shoot, yeah, okay. Well, that's fine. Mm -hmm. The prize is two tickets to Vegas to see Shania Twain. I'm so proud of our prize. I know. I want to win it. <laughs> um, when we picked it out, we were like, we did oh, yeah. good. The seats are really good, too. So they get yeah. like concert tickets, they get Stay airplane, in Hollywood, room wow. nice. in Hollywood, yeah. and then some like travel. Yeah, so hopefully the contest in and of itself will help get a ton of submissions just because all you have to do is buy like one thing from OTC and yeah. hashtag OTC Halloween and you could win it. So yeah, it's, <laughs> it's not, not that difficult. Right. When's your competition? The 12th. Okay. So I just, yesterday was hashtag a day with HIV day. It's like a campaign uh -huh. specifically on the, I think the 23rd every year. Oh. So I posted a picture of that and then talking about my competition and then saying for the next three weeks every day I'm going to to vlog up to the competition and I know you guys okay. want to do like maybe like coverage the day of and make that into a thing yeah yeah when is the that? competition Saturday October 12th okay um, so you're gonna vlog every day before the competition um and then we also wanted to do the stigma that's what I worked on in the meantime is I did oh okay cool I'm gonna post it today it was yesterday's vlog um and I just talk about the stigma that I faced oh okay cool life. My barber. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, I noticed a lot of topical stuff does really well, too. Like, yeah. when I was, I was ha happened to be in the BBC News app mm -hmm. looking at the headlines, and the Gareth Thomas story came out. Oh, the force. Yeah. yeah. It was 12 minutes prior. I was at home. I had nothing to do. So I was like, okay, I'm going to try on my vlog. I'm going to do a bunch yeah. of research, get video clips, information, facts, his biography, and then I just did a vlog and then, like, did it, edited it, and had it posted within, like, three and a half hours. Okay. And so it was, like, the number one search result on YouTube for like three days. Oh, like nice. I got like wow. 10k views. Like, good. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And I know even when we post, like the John Thurman S post on our Instagram did like the best engagement of any. So you already did this Sigma video. Like, would you want to do another one? For myself. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But I'm down to like make it a series of like asking yeah. like, I have another guy who's an influencer on YouTube. Okay. And he w is down to talk about Sigma as well. Cool. Awesome. You, of course. Yeah. Okay. And That's I wrote it. in the, um, just the future projects ideas on the Google Docs. Yeah. I added uh, as an idea, heroes of AHF profiling oh, employees. Oh yeah, volunteers. that would be really you know? cute. Like, oh, let's do yeah. It. I want to do something like that with our testers. That would be a great idea. Mm -hmm. I love it. And in our retreat, we were just telling, like, talking about telling more stories from like our employees' perspective. Mm -hmm. too, so perfect. Yeah, you read our mind. <laughs> Okay, let's for sure do that. So let's do that. Because it'd be interesting too to hear from testers, like some of the, on the mobile units. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and just that like some too. of the stories they hear about like why people were afraid to get tested or like why it took them so yep. long. Like just those types of stories where it was pe people yeah. coming in like. Even Max at events has stories yeah. of people who he's like they really didn't want to and then they did and this is what happened. And yeah. most people who like really, really don't want to, it's because it's they have like a they... feeling that they're positive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so he even told us a story about someone last year at an event who like really really didn't want to and he like convinced them to and then they were positive and like sort of like she lost it on Max yeah. and then came up to Max this year at the same event like gave him a hug and was like thank you so much like blah 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 I know yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so like those types of stories a lot of these testers yeah have yeah, yeah. I just want to observe and see what yeah. you, you guys do because yeah. I see the content and I see the post and everything and it's just so amazing I'm gonna be do I'm doing Love Line tonight. Oh yeah. It'll be fun. Cool. Wait, what is that? Um, it's a. I mean, it's an old show that used to be on K Rock. Mm. That talks about like love and sex, but it's a new it's a new doctor now, Dr. Chris Donahue, and it's on Channel Q, which is like an LGBT. Q plus yeah. focused uh, radio station. I've been talking to him for a while about like coming on and talking about HIV advocacy, mm -hmm. and I saw him at the gym like a week ago. And now is like the perfect time to do it because there's so He's much He's like, well, I can't just bring it. people yeah. on. Like, I need an in. I need to, something for my producers to be like, this is like topical. Mm -hmm. And then I, as soon as Jonathan Van Ness, I like yeah. sent him a message. I was like, hey, hey. topical. It's topical. <laughs> I was like, okay. It's topical. <laughs> yeah. And what did you say to him when you met him outside? When you were interviewed, you said something that was like two sentences that just like he was just. But he's like, 
So I was waiting to do my podcast with Jennifer Cohen, which is like a big fitness mm -hmm. um, person, and he was finishing up and he came out to the hallway. He's like, hey, he's like, you look familiar. Who are you? Mm -hmm. and I was like, oh, wait, you're Aussie. And I think we figured out that we both worked out at Crunch. And he's like, so what do you do? Mm -hmm. and I was like, well, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm an HIV advocate and I like use like my journey from my diagnosis from like victim mindset and realizing that that was like the physical manifestation of like my whole thought process and yeah. that transformed through fitness and like changing myself inside to like really take charge yeah. of my life. Yeah. And he's like, wow, he's like, I've never heard anybody talk about it like that. He's like, you need to come on my show. Well, yeah. I'm so happy to finally meet you yeah, guys, because I, I always hear so much about you, and I yeah. see the photos and stuff, and the, <laughs> I know sometimes yeah, right, post this before we know, and I'm like, maybe I should wear makeup on <laughs> yeah. yeah. the <laughs> Yeah. And I just love what you, you guys are doing. And oh, thank you. Really, really helping so many people, and I love that race. They're the best. Aw, so are you. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, like, you're always welcome whenever you want to come, yeah. or thank yeah, you. Have it any really helps, because then I have, like, a good idea because I always hear what yeah. you're doing and everything, yeah. but it's nice to, to go in and actually see it. Yeah. yeah, it's super collaborative. So mm -hmm. like yeah, I love that. And and it's funny because I do long term influencer partnerships, a lot of them, all the time. And and it's rare to have somebody like Rafe that um, is is almost like I mean, I know he's being paid as an influencer, but it's like he's an unpaid employee, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like, he, he's part of the team, yeah, yeah, yeah like everyone in the office knows him, exactly. Yeah. And, <laughs> and it's like having somebody you know really on your team where most influencers are over here yeah. and they're posting mm -hmm. and, they're, and they're never in here, yeah. like you, you know, talking yeah. and, and yeah. collaborating and, and yeah. really involved. Yeah. So, yeah. I yeah. love that, yeah. And yeah. It's, it's good for us. Yeah. yeah. And Rafe yeah. was the first slash only really influencer we've ever had a partnership with. And I recently came on board to do all social. Um, and I like this model, this model better than yeah. models at any of the other places I've been where yeah. Well, it's rare to, to have this model, mm -hmm. you know, cause, it, cause a lot of the influencers with all due respect, they're, they're not maybe capable of coming in and yeah. Yeah. invested or in invested for yeah. 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 yeah to, to, to do yeah. it so so yeah. he's a rare find he's yeah, just really. amazing <laughs> a good manager <laughs> yeah. sounds good yeah. Yeah. thanks for coming in well thank you for having me yeah. I just finished making some beef fast I'm gonna eat this really quick and then head to the gym there was one of like uh, professional but I just want to make sure it HIV advocate influencer okay. yeah just generic so I'm just gonna set you in the green room okay um, and then uh, we'll bring you in around like 715 or something awesome all right so um, yeah just make yourself comfortable there's some waters I think and then sweet you just make sure there are yeah, there's water and a beer if you want it. <laughs> Is that low? That's cute. You sure? Yeah. And the way just, you... just move your chair so that you're like, uh, uh, the chair is like closer right. to that. And then so you your volume, yourself. I think, is that slide. Right? Yeah. This one? Yeah. Okay. Oh, perfect. All right. Got 20 seconds. Y'all ready? There yeah. is tissues. Tissues are gross. There we go. I don't know why. I just it's think like tissues are dirty. It's like people touch them. <clears throat> on channel Q. All right, we're back. Our question of the night's up on our Loveland IG page. We'll be breaking that on down later in the show and also talking about love languages. That's one of those things that people sling around. We're going to be talking about the importance of them, the meaning of them, but also some of the flaws. But more importantly, we're with Raif Darazi, HIV advocate and influencer. What's going Hello. on? Thanks for having me. Yeah, your chair is so much higher than mine. Uh -oh. <laughs> All of a sudden, I just had a weird height panic. But that's okay. Take the high chair. Yeah. Ah, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Um, so what's interesting is a couple days ago, Jonathan Van Ness from Queer Eye, those yeah. that are familiar with him, came out as HIV positive, mm -hmm. and it's had like a ripple effect. Totally. So talk to me just a little bit for the people that aren't familiar with your work, how you yourself got into HIV advocacy. So for me, it was about... Um, I was diagnosed with AIDS back in 2012. So um, that was on my 27th birthday. And part of that year after was about me like figuring out like 
my my place in life? What am I going to do? Am I going to be healthy? What's going on? And I was like looking for role models and examples in the media and on YouTube especially, and I just wasn't seeing anything or anyone. And I was like, well, that sucks. But if there's nothing there already, then maybe like I can be that for somebody else. And that's kind of what spurred me on to start talking about it, or at least think about it at that time. Because it yeah, took me a while. It's powerful because that's the part I actually pulled out from your bio that I thought was yeah. most interesting is the lack of role models. Because when I read that, I started thinking my mind and I was thinking, I can't think of anyone either yeah. as well. Maybe it had been noted that someone was positive diagnosed, but it wasn't something that they necessarily led with or exactly. tried to advocate and for. The reference that I would get so often was like, oh, Magic Johnson. And I'm like, I'm like, bro, that's like 30 years ago. Like, where's everybody in between? You know what I mean? And he's not relatable to everyone. No, and Charlie Sheen, I'm like, okay, well. Oh, that's right, too. But he's also not very relatable <laughs> as well. Right. But it's interesting that there's no one from the LGBTQ community that was kind of... Like li- our age, yeah. you know, vibrant, living well. Our age, I like that. I like that. I like that. <laughs> um, so what are your thoughts about Jonathan Van Ness coming out? You then see that as a positive move. Yeah, I think it's freaking awesome. You know, I didn't know a lot about him necessarily before um, him coming out. I just knew he was on the show. I didn't know that. And I just know that he has, like, a really bubbly, charming personality, and, like, people love him, and he has, like, good vibes. So, for me, that's like, yes, we need more of that. Like, people who look healthy and happy and vibrant. Thriving. Exactly. Thriving. Someone who's still moving forward in their life in all the ways they wanted to not held back by anyone. It's not a hindrance. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was surprised to see it happen. And I don't know what I mean by that other than I guess I recognize that for some people that are in positions in their career that have something to lose, I can imagine that there's got to be a moment of sitting with, am I ready to take on whatever impact this could have if there's a negative one? Yeah, and I know that he had been wrestling with that for a while. Okay. That's what I read in his bio. And interestingly, in the past week, another person came out, uh, Gareth Thomas with HIV. He was like an ex pro rugby player in um in britain i know this yes, so, I read yeah yeah it was well. like back to back and i thought that wow that's like i don't know if this is necessarily a tipping point um or a critical mass but definitely it's interesting to see two like high profile people coming out with it i like to see it uh, you know i do tend to try to forecast where we're moving in terms of like sex relationships and gender those are kind of like uh mm-hmm. and also things that within sexual health and I do see us, thankfully, moving towards more honesty, authenticity, and more like kind of accommodation for that stuff. Yeah, yeah. And I'm, and I'm glad for that because one of the things that comes in, and um, a couple weeks ago I had Janelle on, and she runs the ST, what used to be called the STD Project, it's now the STI Project. But she was diagnosed with herpes 20 years ago, and she was talking about her own journey. Um, and I was just saying to her that it's really great to see in the past couple of years more people coming forward and trying to put together resources, but also also advocacy for these things. Because in my practice, that's one of the things that a lot of people come in struggling with is they get a diagnosis for something that's not curable, mm-hmm. and then they say, "What's my life going to look like now?" Especially in terms of dating. Yeah, and I think there is a good amount of education out there for sure. There's a lot of facts, there's a lot of numbers, but as far as seeing like a person living out their life. I think that adds such a like a psychological benefit for a lot of people. Yeah, and if they look on your IG, you're definitely living your life. <laughs> <laughs> In the gym mostly. <laughs> no, but again, going back to what you said about Jonathan being kind of you know bubbly is um there's a lot I mean that's one of the things. So going through your, your images, like I just try to get a felt sense of someone. And there's definitely like a lot of happiness and celebration. I think that's sure. powerful to see. Yeah. I feel like I have just intrinsically a pretty optimistic um, outlook on life. Yeah. Okay. Where's that come from? You know, I don't know. I can say that um, I grew up and I had a lot of hardships early on, and that taught me to really value and appreciate life, and that kind of built an inherent strength in me, and kind of having a sense of gratitude has given me like a good perspective. Gratitude's a powerful thing. So we're talking tonight with Raif Darazi, HIV advocate, about HIV and dating in the world. So... Weigh in on this, then we're going to take a little break. When we come back, I want to really dive deep into like the whole dating process yeah. and how that's reoriented your life. But you said when you got the diagnosis, you took on the role of, I'm going to be an advocate for that. Where where does that confidence come from? Because that's that's a big thing to step into. To not just own it and celebrate it, yeah. but to like publicize it. I've always had somewhat of a rebellious, strong um, spirit growing up as a kid, and I think wow. that's just with practice and habitual. Well done. Yeah. I like a good rebel every now and then. All right. Coming up next, we're going to talk more about sex and dating with HIV diagnosis. But question that's up on our Loveline IG page. Wait on that. You're listening to Loveline with Dr. Chris on the new channel Q and radio.com. Where do you live? How close are you? Runyon. Oh, shit. like 13 minutes. Do you like living up there? Yeah. I just moved there a month ago, actually. Oh, shit. I'm moving this weekend. I I live, I guess, kind of near Runyon, but it's a long story. 
stupid, horrible store. I love my place. I've been there for five years, but the entire condo building is having all the pipes redone, which means like they're just demolishing almost everything for yeah. five months. And it's going to be unlivable. So <clears throat> last Friday, I just went around looking for a new place and I found a place I'm moving in this weekend. And I'm like, my head's spinning because it's the fastest thing I've ever pulled together. Yeah. Where's that? Um, it's far better inside because I've driven by when it first went up and I was like that fucking eyesore but I'm moving <laughs> to the Dillon which is right near Target on La Brea and Santa Monica but then you're going to be closer to him now right? no just no. north of Target yeah mm. like it looks really like <laughs> yeah. that Lights. yellow eyesore that I drove by <laughs> I was like, so it's actually the center very, very nice outside, inside like, yeah it's nice I it, it actually wanted to be a gift because I was looking around some of the newer condos and some of them are so expensive yeah. it's obscene yeah. and they're not large yeah and they're wanting like 5k or more yeah. and they're like are you kidding me yes. it's nuts and i have a really big place i have a lot of shit um so that anyway so that's working out but it's been like a wild week because um i've never been asked for so many things in my life they want like a photo of my cat they want like a photo they want a vet note is all you have is a cat? Yeah. For yeah. And they also, it's $45 a month. But this cat has too much maintenance, we can't. Sorry. $45 a month. Not a deposit, a deposit and $45 a month to have. The rent, yeah. Mine would have been the same thing, but I have like emotional that. support. See, I didn't think Which fast. you should get, I didn't you think, think fast. fast. You can still do it anytime. I give people those notes. I can write myself one. <laughs> I literally, though, they asked me quickly and I wasn't, I wasn't thinking. I didn't realize they were like inputting it into a thing. But as I was answering, he's like typing it in. I was like, oh, yeah. that just got formalized. Yeah, just add it later. Oh. Yeah, you can take it out. Yeah, anytime, so yeah. have it now. I couldn't believe it though. Uh, you need, you need, you need that. You need your cat though. <laughs> Otherwise, I don't know where you'd be. <laughs> Tom, this severe, is severe mental illness spiral. Is that yeah. where you're going with this? <laughs> it's the only thing that keeps me somewhat balanced. Yeah, yeah. that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, this is the first time I'm living on my own in an apartment. Oh, first congrats. Time, like, it's a big deal. The freedom and the creativity. Oh, yeah. Just like, oh, oh God. you're going to love it. It's amazing. There's moments where you might miss having another human being around, but no. like, you'll love it. Yeah, yeah. okay. I have good. my dog. That's it's so it. rad. Yeah. I've lived alone for a long time. Unless, like, I mean, like, I shouldn't say that. A year and a half ago, I was engaged and living with someone. So I don't know what okay. I'm saying. I've lived alone for a long time. It's been, I guess a year and a half. But um, it's a stunning thing to live alone. I encourage it. My creativity is just... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there just an email went around about uh, Emmy. What was it? Dress code. Oh, yeah. Dress like, code. I'm all, what's his dress code? Wait, what? Yeah. They sent around <laughs> an inner... For you? Uh, not, no, they better not, but I, I mean... Didn't. No, they just said don't be, like, too revealing. Like, don't wear short shorts or, like... Yeah, apparently off. someone's rocking out some booty like, like, shorts and upsetting people. Bitch. They probably... That's probably you, the day where you, like, forgot your pants and you just wear, like, that shirt. That's your, your sh I know her, the her shorts were so short that literally I'm like you forgot pants you're no, just wearing a shirt because the so t-shirt is like I friend. purposely would do that I just purposely just come in like short yeah, I have long, long shirts that, that and my yeah. shorts are relatively yeah. short that it would look like short shorts. yeah, yeah. get with the times yeah I know right <laughs> come on we're we, sex positive we, here. be sex positive you got 20 seconds we're not worried you hit silly, um, the record button and then hit it again yeah, just to restart yeah. it covered up human like ever. <coughs> it's on the right side on the back right top yeah this thing right yeah perfect cool. awesome oh my god this song is so such a downer I know Let's what the heck play this again. Why? okay ready All right, we're back. We got our question of the night up on our Loveline IG page. And later in the show, we're going to be doing a little freak on the streets answering your Q&A. But more importantly, right now, we're with Raif Darazi, HIV advocate and influencer. So we're kind of talking about a whole bunch of stuff. But let's jump into the important stuff, the sex and the dating. Mm, let's do it. Um, so upon getting your diagnosis, when or how quickly did your mind go to broop, dating? Oof. I mean, instantly I was like, well, that, there goes that. That's over. Or, you know, I even considered for a while going to only HIV positive dating sites, stuff like that. Um, it took me about six, nine months to really feel ready to start dating again, though. And then at that point I was like, let's not limit myself to HIV. That's... What was the turning point? What do you think was that which propelled you the most? So interestingly, shortly after my diagnosis, I ended up breaking my ankle and I was bedridden for like five mm -hmm. months. And I was like, okay, I need to do some serious inner work. Like something's not working. The universe in my life. is like chill <laughs> yeah. and make some changes. Like sit dude. down and work. 
So I did everything I could think of, like The Secret, I did um, like motivation, inspirational books, dream, um, dream boards, vision boards, journaling every day, gratitude journal, like everything. Cause I'm like, I gotta change something inside, clearly. And so after about like nine months, that's when I was like, okay, I'm starting to feel like I've got my stride a little bit and I can go out and explore. And, and, and how was that? I'm sure that journey was a mixed bag in some ways. Because <sighs> yeah. people, people can be horrible. For sure. And I was definitely, I was ready. I was expecting to get a lot of negative reactions. Um, I definitely didn't put, put on my profile that I was HIV positive because people are so quick to just like swipe or just go on to the next person. And sure. it's like, if you give them one reason to like not even consider you, then bye-bye. Smallest infraction. Yeah. Disregard it. Yeah. yeah. And then, I, and I saw it as an opportunity to educate if people would give me the time to at least have a conversation. But a lot of times I would wait until the first in-person date before I brought it up. And to be honest, and I think this might be a part of just living in West Hollywood in LA, is that um, I would bring up my HIV status and sometimes they would be hesitant or they would be put off, but then I would educate them a little bit and then usually more often than not, they'd be open to it. Okay, yeah. so let's talk about that for a second because yeah. I, I love your willingness. I also recognize the exhaustion that can come from the emotional labor of educating people <laughs> because I take that on where I'll be on a date and they'll say something. I'll be like, well, that was a racist joke and that's not okay. That was actually very body shaming and that's actually offensive <laughs> to people with larger bodies. That, sir, was sex negative and this is the reason why I don't want to say that. And so I realized I had to like, it's exhausting yeah. sometimes. So um, did you ever have those moments where you're like, oh my God, can people just do their own education and be better? Hurry um, up. I have those moments for you. I'm I'm pretty patient when it comes to that. And I'm pretty blessed. empathetic to other people. Okay. So I never really like held it against another person for not knowing better. Because those apps can be nasty. I mean, again, as someone I myself. Think abs. Oh, well, that too. Apps great, those but... apps can be nasty as well. <laughs> um, but the apps, the dating apps, you know, as someone who has a lot of different privileges, it's interesting to see how overtly nasty people can be oh, totally. with what they're not even willing to try to encounter. Yeah. They just wipe out entire populations of people based on these like little yeah. qualifiers. Um, I think mentally I disconnect like what they're actually saying to me or to people and just who they are as a person and right. what they're going through and their happiness level and their like ability to enjoy life. And I, I know that that like when someone's that angry and that hateful, like that's a you issue. That's right. And, like I don't take that on. Yeah. Cause you're the question, the, the understanding is that's going to show up in various other areas of their life and you don't want to encounter that. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So what advice do you give to people? Cause one of the things that comes up a lot on my show, when I travel and lecture in my offices, someone says to me, how soon into the dating process or the courtship process mm -hmm. should I feel um the need to disclose um any kind of like you know std uh, sti i mean that you're opening a big can of worms with that yes. question i just came from the united states conference on aids and we were in a workshop where we were actually talking about disclosure and as it relates to being undetectable and so a lot of people feel now that when you're undetectable you shouldn't have any obligation to disclose at all because you cannot transmit the virus at all. as in there's nothing to disclose exactly in their mind at that yeah. point right um, I feel it's definitely just relative to every situation, every person. Like, I couldn't give a hard, fast rule on that. Yeah. Uh, another friend of mine that's um, an HIV advocate, he's in the East Coast of New York. He skews more along the side of what you were just saying, where he doesn't feel the need. Or, well, let me say it like this. He would say, I no longer will take on the responsibility of being accountable to other people's sexual health and wellness. Mm -hmm. So they need to ask me the questions they need to ask. I don't any longer mm -hmm. feel the need to volunteer. And also, because he's undetectable, his position is, I'm not responsible because there's nothing to transmit. Yeah. But I also have worked with people on the other side where a diagnosis being um, disclosed to them down the road, although they understood, they also said it, it shook my ability to trust a little bit because I still felt like something was being withheld. I totally understand that. And I'm act personally, I'm actually of the viewpoint that I want to disclose it as early as possible too because I do feel a sense of responsibility to, um, for advocacy and just awareness, visibility. I think Beautiful. that helps reduce the stigma. Um, but I get that, especially because when you're disclosing, it's like, you don't necessarily know if you're going to be dating this person in a month from now, yes. or if it's just a hookup, That's or right. if you can trust this person, yes. or if you're private about it, they have information that they can use however they want with whoever they want. You have no control over that. And I completely support that concept. And that's one of the things I say to people as well. Just be open to the idea that you don't know where they're going to go with this information. And if mm -hmm. you're out there heavily dating, or you're a, you know, a big participant in hookup culture, you are pot you know, possibly sending a lot of people yeah. out in the world. Especially in smaller towns where That's everybody right. knows everybody. It's, it's, it's not fair to There's a risk there. So also I want to talk about the concept of like secondary disclosure. The idea where, you know, you, you let people know um, and then the question, or how often is the question I guess I should ask, 
how did that come to be? Wait, what do you mean? Where people often will want to know, well, how did you become positive? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, so like for me, it's a little ambiguous because it potentially could have been um, having um, protectionless sex with another man, or it could have been from the relationship that I was in for three and a half years at the time, which I thought was monogamous, committed, but then later on found he was cheating and then mm -hmm. he had AIDS as well at that time. So I don't really know personally. But what do you think of the value of that question? Um, I think it's, it's almost like fishing for like, how did you get it is like, do I judge you with stigma as someone who's like going out and hoeing it out? Like, or... did you deserve it? Exactly. Did you ask for yeah. it? Yeah. It's yeah. very victim blaming. Yeah. We're not even victim blaming. It's just like you said, very much entering the conversation already loaded. Yeah. It's like, if you find out that the person was born with it, you're like, oh, like uh, my heart goes out to you so much compassion. But it's like, if you, they knew that you were just having sex casually as you saw fit then it's a different reaction yeah that kind of stuff breaks my heart yeah yeah it's interesting though this topic brings up a lot for people uh rafe so where can people find you uh they can find me on instagram my name raif derazi r-a-i-f-d-e-r-r-a-z-i it's actually the same on all platforms youtube oh, lucky man. i do a lot of vlogging on youtube and then i just started on twitter awesome yeah well listen thanks for being on the show and also thanks for the work you do because people like you are a beautiful resource for me to send patients that I work with to kind of get a little bit more empowerment. So awesome. Thank yeah. You for Thanks so much for having me. Uh, all right. Coming up next, we'll be sliding into the DMs and them talking about love languages. You're listening to Love Line with Dr. Chris on the new channel Q and radio.com. That little Yay. pop up at the end. Sweet. Yeah, the secondary disclosure thing is so fascinating to me where the follow up is off. Yeah. But how did that come to be? It's like, yeah. wow. Do you have, you have to stop this, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's the wave right there. Very cool. You guys are all here. That's awesome. We walked past it earlier, but it's like a little nook in the yeah. corner. And then Amp Radio is on the other side. So it's like our little Hall of Fame. I Very guess. cool. Yeah. All of these little posters are from sound spaces that we have. Um, we used to have an in-house venue and they're building another one in this building because we all moved recently into this building. Yeah. Um, so they're continuing it, but we've just been like throwing on events like that, random places throughout the city. Oh, no. Super cool. Then, do you want any pictures in front of anything? Are we happy um. about? Nah, just for the vlog. I feel like <laughs> Do you want to see anything else? I mean, What's... there's not too much else to see. There's just like, this is like our lobby and upstairs is just a bunch of like promotion stuff. That's it's cool. like a bunch of cubicles and that's like our whole Oh, cluster. very cool. This is a cool wall here. Uh, awesome. Yes, love it. Thank and, you. Yeah, of course. The rest is boring offices. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. I hope you have a lovely day. That was night. fun. Thank you. Thank you. You were partaking in. Yes. <laughs> I'll email you the link tomorrow yeah. for the podcast. Okay. Have a good night. You too. Thank you. Guys, so fun. <laughs> that was very cool. I could I could have stayed for another hour and just talk my head off. Next time, one of these days.